That would save us a lot of money. We spent good money on this hay this year. Hay is expensive. Here we go. So it's uh, October 12th today, and this happened last night. Looks like about six to eight inches. Farmer's Almanac says this year is gonna be cold and wet. So far, they're spot on. It's freezing out here. I mean, literally, it's freezing in snow. Hello, freezing, yeah. We still got a lot of projects outside that we need to get done. A lot of them in the ground. I gotta dig some holes and get some things ready that way. So hopefully this should melt off by the end of the week and we'll be able to get back to doing things in the ground. Next week's supposed to be in the 50s all week, so which is still pretty cold for this time of year. But um, yeah, snow, it's fun. I'm gonna feed some cows now. So the snow doesn't bother the cows one bit. They will stay out in it. We have we don't have a shelter here for them, but before we moved to this place, we did have a shelter, and the only time they would go in it is in the summer when it was hot. They didn't care one bit about being out in the rain or the snow. The only thing that does bother them is the wind. I don't know if it's really windy, which it's a little bit breezy today. It's a cold wind, but they won't care um, until it gets up to like 20 miles an hour, which it's not. So if it's a really cold wind, they'll try to get away from that. And we've got some wind blocks um, with the garden side and the ditch bank on the side they can lay down and get out of the wind. But the snow doesn't bother them. They'll just lay down on top of it, insulates underneath them, and they'll even, in the dead of winter, I'll come out in the morning and they'll be completely covered in snow. You can hardly see a cow out there because they're so buried in it. And it doesn't bother them. They're pretty hardy. Got them water last night, so they're mostly full on water. But it's a little slushy this morning. Um, it's a good thing I got them water last night because I left the hose out. It's buried completely under the snow. I don't think there's any way that that thing is not frozen. Normally these chickens just come rushing out of there. They're not sure what to think about this. <laughs> What's this garbage out here? There are 13 of these chickens that are newer. Um, we haven't had them for very long and they won't go into the coop on their own. So I've been lifting them into the coop by hand every night for like two or three weeks. What you bet they all go in on their own tonight. Ducks don't care. They're fine. The kale looks like it's fine in there. It's getting squished a little bit, but it's still just as green as could be. Once this melts off, I think we'll be back to picking kale. It looks like the compost pile stayed warm enough that most of the snow didn't stick on it. So. It looks like it's doing its job. Looks like it heated up once we piled it up over here. Goats aren't happy. Well, a few days have passed. I was gonna wait out this cold because it's still October. It's not gonna stay this cold for the rest of the year. I was gonna wait it out, but it's been three days. We're going on three days of snow. So I got things to get done out here. Um, I want to start getting the garden area prepped for next spring by putting the goats in here, letting them eat everything down. There's still a lot of vegetation out in this garden and so the goats will help us clean that up and then we can run some chickens through here and then come spring we should have mostly just wood chips sitting on top. I came out here to get some stuff cleaned up to put these goats in here and I found another big stash of eggs. These dang chickens 
just keep hiding their eggs. I've still got eight or nine of them that will not go in the chicken coop at night. I have to lift them in every single night. All right, we got 14 eggs there. We will set those aside for now and go get a goat. It's the same chicken laid all 14 of them. They look exactly the same. So that means 14 days, two weeks. They should probably be okay. It's been cool enough outside, but we'll still float them. Make sure that they're all right. We're gonna go get a goat now. Here we go. Gotta walk through the other goats. They get themselves all tangled up just as I'm walking. Come on, Gary. Can you get it untangled? No, oh, you almost had it. Hold on. job Gary that's some good work if you look real close you can see it there's steam just pouring off the top of that compost it's getting its job done that's gonna be in our garden next year growing me some awesome food the lettuce and kale are still holding up really well out here in this cold well, I gotta get all the junk cleaned out of here pretty soon as we move these goats across. Um, in the next couple weeks, they're gonna be free ranging in here eating everything. Well, maybe next. As soon as this kale is done, whenever that happens. Our weather has finally warmed up, and I finally found some time to get out and work on our next project. Um, we're out here, the cows back there and we're gonna be building a feed bunk. If you recall, last year we fed the cows under the electric fence. I'll put a um, link you can click on if you wanna check out how we did that. A great way to feed cows in with temporary fence. We are building this spot here permanent for the cows, so we are going to be building a permanent feed bunk for them um, so we don't have to feed them under the fence and worry about that. It's a little bit um, simpler this way and will probably save us even more on feed than doing it under the fence like we did last year. That was very helpful in saving us on feed, but I think we can do better. So we're gonna build this bunk today. So in essence, what we're gonna do, we've got this fence here that runs down. These panels are just temporary up here for now. We will build a separate fence two feet away from it that will be shorter and then we'll Put some bracing around that um, when we replace these panels we'll put some boards up so that they could put their heads through there but they in theory won't be able to get their body through and so they can put their heads through feed that way that way they won't be pulling back out um, and wasting hay as much so we're going to get to building that i already got started on this end um, first thing i got to do is cut a post in half because we're making this fence shorter instead of four foot tall it's going to be like two feet tall.
Well, that went pretty quick. I got the two end posts up. I pulled a string between the two. I'm not gonna worry so much about the spacing. Um, it's gonna be roughly eight feet. I'm just gonna use the existing post that I have here for this fence line. They are eight, roughly eight feet. So we're just gonna space off of those. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is that they're in a straight line with that existing fence. So I put the string up and then we'll just measure off the old posts and get those posts in the ground. Well, that's just about all the battery I've got, all the daylight I've got, and all the time I've got for this project for today. So we'll have to pick it back up tomorrow. We are going tonight to our 4-H awards night. Um, the kids did all their 4-H projects and they're gonna go see what awards they won. We'll pick this back up. We are back out here the next morning. Um, first thing before we get working on this feed bunk is I'm gonna check on some goats. We got them moved into the garden. All three of them moved into the garden. And I just wanna make sure they're not getting tangled up in here. So we're gonna go check on some goats real quick and then we'll get to working on this. Hey Gary, you stuck? You good. Looks like you're okay. You got a lot of work to do. Get to eating. Hey, Gonzo. Good start out here, but you got a lot of work to do. And you, what have you done? What have you done?
I could draw the strength to give you up. I'd sear my heart with your smile to burn away every inch of us. I'm not strong enough. I'm not strong enough. Oh, don't hide your heart away. Just place your hand. So as these cows eat, when I'm feeding them under the fence, they kind of pull everything under and scatter it around a little bit. They will slick up a lot of that, but they still leave about 10% behind. I am hoping to reduce that by about half. If I can get them down to just wasting like 5%, that would be awesome. That would save us a lot of money. We spent good money on this hay this year. Hay is expensive, at least in our area. We did not get much rain and so prices of hay went way up. So to wrap this up, we have got to go get some um, split rails is what we're gonna put around this. So we'll get some split rails. You get those put up, that's gonna have to wait till next video. So we'll check you guys later.